critics would also say that Elon, in a way, is also facing additional pressure because he's stretched. Um, people say that he's distracted. Uh, how do you react to that? How do you respond to that? And how is he doing? It's, the, it's, <laughs> it's really a question whether he's a human or alien, but <laughs> he seems to have an uh, incredible bandwidth of his work. So uh, I just commented. Mean, you can ask him directly. But one of the things I just wanted to mention is like uh, Tesla has been pushing the regulator very, very hard. And then we got a lot of pushback. And the, some of our approach has not been very conventional. So we create a lot of debate and controversy. <laughs> But I think it's also reflect that the, uh, the arch we are feeling, you know, so the, uh, the, we don't care about the, uh, the competition really because the, we are basically competing against the internal combustion engines. So the, we just need to, we have like another 80 plus percentage of the global car sales are still not V. So uh, we are kind of competing against them. So we welcome all the competitors to come in to introduce our cars. And I disagree whenever Elon says, I don't mind the, uh, the Tesla getting, you know, the, uh, getting into bankruptcy if somebody else come up with a better car, which I disagree. But <laughs> I think that's the kind of like, uh, you know, the, uh, his philosophy and the Tesla's philosophy. We really wanted to shift the whole system or the transportation to sustainable, you know, the energy system. And no, this does not mean Elon is fine with Tesla going bankrupt. It's really just a mantra like saying, look, if we've done everything we can to absolutely make the best products, do the best things for the customers, and yet somebody still beats us, then we'll be able to sleep easy at night knowing we did everything that we can. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So I just have to touch on this battery storage project that will be made up of Tesla Mega Packs in Ontario because no one is really talking about it at all. It's a 250 megawatt, 1000 megawatt hour project, which means these are four hour duration Tesla Mega Packs. This project is beginning construction now, should be completed in 2025. Some quick, simple numbers. This 1000 megawatt hour project divided by 3.9 megawatt hours per megapack is about 256 megapacks for this project, which at 12 per day works out to 21 days of production. Then multiplying by $1.8 million in terms of cost per megapack, that's about $461 million in revenue just from this one project. If you slap on a 30% margin, that would be $138 million in profit for Tesla just from this one project. And just a fun fact, for Tesla to make roughly the same amount of profit, they would have to sell in the neighborhood of 14,000 cars if you assume an average of $10,000 in profit per car. One of the most overlooked aspects of this project though is that the Canada Infrastructure Bank is actually contributing $170 million. So yes, this is a direct partnership between the Canadian and specifically Ontario government and some private organizations. Go take a look around mainstream media and tell me how many articles have been written about this development. It will be one of the largest clean energy storage projects anywhere on the planet. This is a huge deal and again will serve as a more recent updated blueprint of what other governments and municipalities should be doing in the future as well. Tesla's weekly insurance registration data came in for the most recent week at 6,963 behind both Wuling and BYD. Here's that data plugged into the table. This is actually the sixth week of the quarter. So if you wanted to compare it to the sixth week of the fourth quarter, this would be the number to compare it to 13.9 thousand. As I've been saying, we should absolutely be expecting a slowdown. Tesla does not yet have a more affordable vehicle where right now in the Chinese market, that's where consumers are flocking and I'd still like to see another month or two of data before making any real conclusions on new levels of demand. If you'd like to draw your own conclusions, this chart from Roland may help you. It's just the week of the quarter for the last three quarters, Q1, Q4, and Q3. As this chart shows us, this reading was essentially in line with the sixth week in Q3 of 2022. It looks like Elon may have another union labor situation on his hands as some of the employees at the Buffalo factory for Tesla are trying to form a union. This one is interesting though because the employee makeup at this factory is not super clear. There's around 1,900 employees and we know some are making inverters and superchargers, the cables, solar roof, but some of those employees, remember as we talked about, are actually just doing data annotation, so labeling. In terms of employee breakdown, I was able to find that the Buffalo plant has around 800 autopilot analysts doing that data labeling. They're hired at a starting pay of around $19 per hour. 
These employees are saying they want to say in workplace decision making and to curb monitoring metrics and production pressure. We have such a rush to get things done that I don't know if it's actually being well thought out. It's just, let's get this out as fast as we can. They're saying along with the autopilot workers, the union is working to organize the roughly 1,000 manufacturing employees at this Tesla facility too. So these employees are seeking better pay, job security, and a reduction in production pressures that they say have been harmful to their health. So look, again, I'm not anti-union, but where I come from, if any of these things are happening, then you go look for work somewhere else. And like I've always said, working for Tesla and Elon is not for everybody. The next step for the employees is to get signatures saying they wanna do this, then they would seek to hold a union election. At least 30% of the employees in a potential bargaining unit must sign cards for an election to be held. Some people have joked that maybe Tesla will do what Starbucks has done, let certain locations unionize, and then in the future just happen to close those locations. But don't forget, Tesla has some commitments to the state of New York and Buffalo. So if the factory can get 30% on board, then they can actually host an election which would be in the neighborhood of about 570 employees given the most recent headcount, then if an election is held, they would need more than 50% of the vote to vote in favor of, which would be roughly 1,000 workers. I don't know what the compensation looks like for these data labeling annotators. However, don't forget Elon said, why pay union dues and give up stock options for nothing? Our safety record is two times better than when plant was UAW and everybody already gets healthcare. We as workers deserve to be able to negotiate fair labor with our employers, and there are many changes I'd love to see at Tesla for the benefit of the workers. But there are still plenty of steps ahead before anything like this could ever become a reality. Tesla has just received a new patent for a new windshield wiper that essentially would move magnetically kind of straight back and forth just like this, and then could actually fold horizontally to stow away. The new design features a linear actuator installed at the bottom of the windshield along which a box moves back and forth like a magnetic train. Tesla says this low friction setup is more energy efficient and less susceptible to wear and corrosion than an electric motor would be. This would allow for better coverage of the glass. It'll keep the blade better attached to the surface, especially if it's curved. We just talked about that with the Cybertruck and it can be parked horizontally and hidden under the hood when not in use. So I don't know if we'll see this on the Cybertruck or any Tesla vehicle for that matter, but definitely interesting and of note. BZ Berlin this morning said that Giga Berlin has received exactly zero cents in federal or state funding for the factory so far. When ordinarily in the area, the state and federal government can pay up to 45% of the cost. A state aid notification procedure is currently underway in Brussels for Tesla's application, and this all depends on the EU commission. And they're saying the reason Tesla hasn't received any funds yet is because Tesla keeps changing the application amount very often, but they do conclude by saying Tesla can count on about 6.8% funding, which would be about $136 million from the state with construction costs around 2 billion euros. And don't forget, yes, it's true that Elon did withdraw an application to get over a billion dollars in subsidies for a 4680 battery factory in Berlin. The reason though is still a little cloudy. Publicly, people were saying it's all about Tesla's view that all subsidies should be eliminated, but Tesla definitely took advantage of subsidies for other factories so that doesn't really make sense. The more likely reason is there was a clause in the agreement where the EU required any sites in receipt of the funds to be the first industrial deployment, meaning if Tesla was making 4680s in Austin, then they wouldn't be eligible for those funds. Either way though, this is still a good talking point. Drive Tesla Canada was reporting that there's now a feature where you can remotely control the climate and things like dog mode and camp mode when the vehicle is below a 20% state of charge, but this feature has actually been around now for at least a few months. It's just, yes, they usually give you a warning alert letting you know that your battery is low. Back in 2020, Elon said they could put it to a setting that allows it to go down to 5% state of charge where you can still use climate controls via the mobile app but it has not been confirmed if this is the new threshold or not. So far, the new lower battery threshold does not apply to sentry mode, which still requires at least 20% state of charge to be activated. The first Model Y and Model 3 deliveries have officially begun in Thailand. And we all should know that a new market means new butts in seats, and that's great things for Tesla. Mary Barra has been inducted to the Automotive Hall of Fame. The reasons they cite, first woman CEO in the auto industry, guiding GM 
through the ignition switch recall and establishing gender equity and equal pay. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I know what the bar is to get into this Automotive Hall of Fame, but I do know that since she took over as the CEO back in 2014, their sales overall have been doing something like this. But in fairness, how much of that decline should be pinned on her versus just the state of every legacy OEM as we head toward this transition? Mary gets a ton of flack, so honestly, congratulations, good for her. I mean, she has been leading the way. She led, and boy, did it matter. So far from Giga Berlin, there have been no customer deliveries of vehicles with a white interior, but that may change here soon as some vehicles with a white interior are showing up, but in inventory. And yes, these are indeed produced from Giga Berlin because those VINs start with XPY7. And if you zoom in here on the browser, that's exactly what you see. If you're curious, vehicles made in Shanghai start with LRWY. We've heard a lot of talk about this over the past year, but the vote has finally taken place and the EU Parliament is going to ban the sale of ICE-powered vehicles after 2035. The vote is done. This new law will effectively make it impossible to sell new ICE vehicles after 2035. The law will also set a 55% cut in CO2 emissions for new cars sold from 2030, when previously the target was only 37.5%. They do still need to formally approve the new rules before they can take effect. Final approval is expected in March. It should be noted there will be some leeway for small car makers making less than 10,000 cars or 22,000 vans per year, allowing them to negotiate weaker targets until 2036. And for any low volume auto manufacturers making less than 1,000 new vehicles per year, they will continue to be exempt. As I've been saying, I just hope that personally the free market takes us to this place anyway, but it's nice to have some guardrails in place because we know not all automakers are moving as fast as some others. Tomorrow, Wednesday the 15th, Elon will be speaking at the World Government Summit for a whopping 20 minutes. Now, I personally think these events are kind of goofy because you never really get any great insight and how could you in a 20 minute time slot? but this link will be below. We knew this was coming, but now it's even more official. Ford is looking to cut one in nine jobs in Europe. That will be a total of around 3,800 jobs across the European space. The cuts specifically in Germany work out to about 12% of the workforce. Ford has said nothing has changed with their electrification plans, and this should be obvious. The primary reason for these job cuts, trimming down the ice development and production and freeing up some of those resources to then funnel into to the EV movement. Here's a good table with a breakdown of where these cuts will be taking place. It's going to be 2,800 from production development, 1,000 from administrative, totaling 3,800. 2,300 in Germany, 1,300 in the UK, and 200 from the rest of the EU. At the same time, Ford has halted and stopped production of the F-150 Lightning due to a potential battery issue. The stop shipment order and halt in production was issued at the beginning of last week. Ford has not established a timeline for when production and the shipments will resume. They do say, however, there is no stop sale for vehicles already on dealer lots, meaning dealers can continue to sell vehicles they already have on hand. So is there a chance there's a battery issue with those vehicles? It would seem like it, but I guess there is a chance this is, of course, a new recent problem. I am rooting for Ford, but this one kind of feels right on cue after Farley just got done saying how much inefficiency still exists at Ford, how they really need to change a lot of their production techniques, and ultimately, like we always say, making EVs is not as easy as most people think. Just to drop it on your radar, a former Tesla exec is actually working on this electric boat and it's under Blue Innovations Group, should have up to 150 nautical miles. They're calling it a luxury boat, but based on this render, I'm not sure I'd be ready to go that far. It won't be cheap at a price tag of $300,000, but this John Vo was previously the global head of manufacturing at Tesla. They're going to take reservations for the boat and expect to begin deliveries in the second quarter of 2024. Looking at their website, it's a 30 foot boat, 800 horsepower, 45 miles per hour top speed, eight hour runtime capacity, 12 people. So Subaru and Toyota developed some cars together and this one, the Solterra, which yes, is an EV, is going through a recall for the same problem that the Toyota BZ4X had, a hub bolt issue where the wheels could fall off the vehicle. This recall will affect more than 1,000 model year 23 Solteras. 
And it looks like Model Y and Model 3 buyers in California will now also get a $2,000 rebate. Orders placed on January 12th or after are eligible. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.